Good evening. Welcome to the January 25th Finance and Operations Committee meeting. Before we call tonight's meeting to order, Dr. McGarry, will you please outline the public's participation procedures, please? Uh, yes, Board President Brown. Um, can everybody in here hear me? I, the, it's hard with the, the mask. Thank you. Um, obviously, we have uh, back to in-person participation in committee meetings and board meetings. Uh, anyone attending in person will obviously be able to come up to the microphone, state their name and address, um, and be able to, at the comment period or questioning period, address anything that's on the agenda this evening, and the uh, board will direct the administration uh, to answer any questions uh, this evening. Tonight at committee meetings, we do answer questions. So we'll be taking in-person questions and comments first. Again, please come to the microphone, provide your name address and the specific report that you'd like to uh, agenda item you'd like to comment on or ask questions and we will provide our best answers. We also are continuing to allow participation via uh, virtual uh, participation by the community. Um, two ways to provide your comments or questions to the board. One could be by phone 610-789-7200 extension 2000. Please provide your name, address and the specific uh, agenda item you'd like to comment on or question. Same for the in-person folks, and we will provide our best questions. You can also send an email in to committeequestions at uppertrvsd.org. Same process. Please provide your name and address and identify the specific agenda item and uh, send in your question, and we'll do our best to make sure that we address that before the board moves forward at the close of each uh, committee agenda this evening. Happy to provide any reports uh, or updates on the reports if we need to. Uh, people that are in person obviously have a right to go first and we'll take uh, virtual comments next. Thank you, Dr. McGarry. The meeting of the Finance and Operations Committee will please come to order. Roll call, Board Secretary, Mr. Rogers, please. Dr. Haig. Present. Mr. Desnoyers. Present. Mr. Neal. Mr. Warsavage. Present. Ms. Lamar Murphy? Present. Ms. Williams? Present. Ms. Mitchell? Present. Mr. Fields? I am present and can hear the proceedings. Mr. Brown? Present. Thank you, sir. The districts posted this evening's agenda to board docs at least 24 hours prior to the commencement of this meeting. Is there a motion to approve that previously posted agenda? So, so moved. Move. Second. Thank you. The agenda has been moved and seconded. Are there any amendments to offer? There are no amendments. Thank you. The, the agenda has been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please signify by saying aye oppose and state your name for the record. Those abstaining, please signify by saying aye abstain and state your name for the record. The motion carried. I will now turn over the Finance and Operations Committee meeting to code to my co-chair, Mr. War Savage. Mr. Rogers, please begin with an overview of your agenda items for this evening. Thank you. Tonight we have three agenda items. Uh, number one is a report on the annual water testing, which is informational. We provide an update on the results of the water test testing each year uh, regard, in regards to copper and lead. Uh, Mr. Lee will provide that presentation tonight. Number two is a request to name a school district facility update uh, following up on our previous presentation. Uh, this will be board action. Uh, I will present the cost analysis associated with the two requests that we've received and uh, go through the process in accordance with the board policy. Uh, number three is also board action is policy. We have three policies up tonight. 610 purchases subject to bid and quotation. 611 purchases budgeted. And 626 federal fiscal compliance. Thank you very much. You may proceed with agenda item number one. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Mr. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Marvin Lee from the Visions Office. Um, this evening, the Visions Office will um, talk about the update on the annual water testing results. Why are we testing the annual water testing and how do we do it? The purpose of the water testing is to prevent exposure to the lead contamination in the drinking water in our schools. And the water testing requirements are governed by Act 39 of 2018. The annual water testing is not mandated, but it is encouraged. If a school district up out of performing the annual water testing, the district is obligated to hold a public meeting to discuss the issue. How do we perform it? We collect water samples from five locations in each of our 14 schools, so total 70 locations in the school district. Five locations are school kitchen, nurse's office, first floor water fountain, second floor water fountain, and the, the one more time at the same first floor water fountain. 
Once the water samples are collected, we take the samples to Aqua Water Lab for independent testing. Um, the water samples are collected and taken to Aqua Lab in December of 2021. Before I discuss the results of latest water testing results, I would like to briefly talk about what we have done over the last couple of years to limit the exposure of lead contamination to our school community. In 2020, school district installed 46 touchless bottle fill hydration station on each floor of our schools. And after last year's, year's uh, water testing report out, we posted two different signs at the nurse's office and in the kitchen. The sign in the nurse's office reads, for drinking water, please use bottle fill water fountain available in the hallway. The intent of this sign at the nurse's office to guide students to take medication using the water from the touchless hydration station. We also posted a sign in the kitchen. The sign in the kitchen reads, run water for between 30 to 120 seconds before using water for cooking. The intent of this sign is to flush out any lead in the water before using the water for cooking. Um, some are major financial investments, some are simple signs, but Tim and um, facilities management team wants to minimize the exposure, any exposure to lead contamination to our students. We'll now talk about this year's, this year's result. The EPA threshold for lead is 0 0.015 milligram per liter, and the EPA threshold for copper is 1.3 milligram per liter. We're happy to report that none of the reading came above the EPA threshold. In fact, we did not have any lead detected in any of our water samples, and the copper was detected in almost every water sample we provided to Aqua. The actual water results, the test results are available in the board doc for your review. How about the annual trends? What are we seeing? Um, you're looking at the three-year trend of lead and copper level in the drinking water in our schools. I would like to say uh, the, the most important takeaway point from this chart is none of the test results came above the EPA threshold. Uh, do you see the zeros in the red section? Uh, we definitely want to keep it that way in our schools. How about the coppers? The one last thing. Uh, how about the coppers in the drinking water? Uh, we have detected coppers in almost every water sample that we've tested. Is it okay to have copper in the drinking water? It is actually pretty understandable that we, have we are detecting coppers from our water samples because all districts water lines are made out of copper. Uh, here's a study that I found from Washington State Health Department. A part of the report reads, a small amount of copper is essential for good health. The Food and Drug Administration recommends a dietary allowance of two milligram of copper a day. So the takeaway from this uh, takeaway point from this study is that although we are detecting a small amount of copper in the drinking water in our schools, the copper levels are below the EPA threshold level and the, district had, the school district has no reason to believe it poses a threat to our students' health. In other words, we do not see any major issues with small amount of copper in the drinking water. This concludes my presentation, and I'll, happy to, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Lee. Uh, before we pass it around to the rest of the board, I did have a quick question uh, for, for my clarification. Uh, does the quality of the copper pipes or whatever, whatever facility that is that's transmitting the water, does the quality of that matter when it comes to some of that copper leading into the water that we drink? And would that lead to perhaps an opportunity to explore what it looks like? I'm not sure if we've brought this up in so many words before, but perhaps upgrading some of that infrastructure to improve the water quality. Um, in terms of the copper quality, when, whenever that, um, whether that makes any kind of difference in the qu <laughs> water quality, I do not know the answer, but I can definitely explore that options and get back to you on yeah. that. Yeah. Question. Uh, and this is obviously an improvement. Every time you do this presentation, it gets better because I don't remember a time when we didn't have any lead. You said zero lead this time. So uh, the only thing you can do better next time is a perfect score on both sides. But for the copper, um, I know you said all of the items detected were below the threshold of 1.3. Yes. Can you give me an idea of what it was? Was it 1.25? Was it zero? Just, I just want to, I'm just curious to know if it was close to the number or. All right, so I can read maybe like a first top. 10 reports just from one, the report. Just, just one like I would say like a 1.1 1 point, point, point one to maybe 0.5. Okay, yes. thank you. That's what I usually see in the reports. Thank you. Good job. Thank you very much. Any other questions from board members? 
Seeing none, agenda item number two, please. And Mr. Brown, as far as the copper, <clears throat> just looking at the report quickly, the majority were under 0.5. There are a couple that went above 0.5, but they were all below one, okay. um, and the majority below 0.5 or even a, a third, 0.33. Okay. Thank you. So the next presentation is the request to name a school district facility. So as we previously presented after we received the uh, two requests, we went through policy 701.1, naming school district facilities. Uh, at this point, we're really at step five, where the board comes back, or the administration comes back to the board with a cost analysis on what it would take to implement the naming of the facility. At this point, after our or after our previous meeting, we had discussed the two requests: one being the Harry Dietzler Performing Arts Center, the other being the Benglian Performing Arts Center. Uh, during that meeting, the board actually asked the administration to go back to the two individuals who made the requests and ask if they'd be willing to combine the requests. Uh, one wanted to stand firm with their uh, current request. Uh, a second request actually submitted the revised request to rename the facility the Bengley and Dietzler Performing Arts Center. Uh, so that's what we have before the board tonight. Um, and then we can go directly into, there's really options, uh, as we see it as an administration, of actually naming the facility versus uh, having a, a plaque honoring the career of our two uh, individuals before us tonight. Uh, so in either case, it's likely not going to cost the, more than $2,000 is our assessment because you really have to start getting down to the details of a true design. Um, you know, and, and once the board has made a decision on how we move forward, we'll, we'll go there. But we're not, in all of our experience and what we've had in pricing out and working with different companies, we believe it to be no more than $2,000. Um, there was, we, we explored the idea of outside of the Performing Arts Center, there is raised lettering uh, that clearly shows uh, signage outside. Uh, we, we were concerned that the exterior signage from a township perspective, there's different uh, permitting requirements and ordinances that only allow for a certain square footage of signage. Uh, they w would likely have been willing to allow us to add metal signing above where it states, where it has Performing Arts Center now. The concern from the administration side is adding that signage and not having it match. It's a, it, it has been there for uh, some time. Uh, the alternative would have been ripping down what exists and putting up a brand new sign. At that point, you really are introducing a new signage to, to the district. Uh, so we started to try and creatively think about what are our other opportunities. Uh, one of the opportunities is the main entrance coming off the lobby into the Performing Arts Center and being able to put a sign uh, above, uh, you know, that could potentially look something like this. Uh, you know, this wouldn't be final designs, quite frankly. I, you know, we identified the area, um, you know, and I mocked this up just to give some type of visual for uh, the board and the public. Uh, but that, that is one option if you are going to rename the Performing Arts Center, after, uh, the, either the Dietzler Performing Arts Center or the Bengalian Dietzler uh, Performing Arts Center. Uh, the second option where we, thought if the, if the board wanted to go in a different direction and still honor the story careers of both of these individuals, they could put up plaques in the lobby. Uh, we obviously have amp some wall space in there that we could really uh, have a nice plaque created, you know, in both cases where, you know, maybe it states in honor of Barbara Beglin, in honor of Harry Dietzler, you know, with a picture and a statement really memorializing all of what they've done here uh, in the district on both front. Uh, at that point, that kind of, that gives the board an option of, uh, you know, instead of going full in on name, renaming a facility, keep it as the Performing Arts Center and have, you know, plaques in honor of, of each of them. Uh, but in both cases, we don't see the, the cost exceeding $2,000. In this case, it would be 2,000 for both plaques, um, meaning, less than a thousand per per plaque with creation it, it all comes down to one of the more um, interesting pieces that they charge by by word so depending on how big the description is um, you know we don't foresee it going above a thousand for either plaque um, so that really brings us to the next step in the policy at, at this point the board can have a discussion on how they would like to move forward uh, with either option or you know maybe some combination, depending on how the board uh, wants to proceed. 
uh, we would need two members of the committee to support the change. If we have two members supporting it, you would give me the directive of which option, and, and in the case of uh, a, a plaque in honor of them, it's not your, you would be choosing not to name the facility, and, and we could just move forward with creating the plaques, um, and we could you know, work through that process. But if the board chooses, if two board members would like to move it forward for renaming the facility, um, we would move it to the next board meeting. What I would have to do there, the policy states that I have to advertise the intent of the board to rename the facility for 14 days. 14 days puts us past the February board meeting, so in all likelihood, the, you know, the earliest the board could officially vote on this would be at the March uh, board meeting. So I just want to lay that out because we don't have 14 days to advertise before the February meeting. And at this point, I, I would turn it over to the board for, for discussion. Yep. Um, so I know uh, one of the parties, I believe it was Director Mitchell, she, she was willing to revise her um, recommendation, you know, in the spirit of honoring both of the worthy candidates that we're trying to honor. Um, and I know the other uh, person, I can't remember who it was, but they did not want to do that. Has a, the idea of a plaque been mentioned to them? Because, um, again, I think, she, they, I think they wanted to keep... Um, whatever the dedication is, keep it separate and, you know, like have him stand alone. Um, so would that plaque, would that be acceptable to them? I'm just trying to make sure we um, not appease them, but honor the intent of them making a recommendation at all. So in both cases, the, the policy was followed for specifically renaming the facility. So I, I did not circle back to say that I was going to bring forward an option. Okay. The reason why I brought forward the option is I, I think during the last committee meeting in the presentation, there was a lot of conversation about, are there any other ways to honor them? Um, so I didn't want to come forward and to the board and the public and say, you know, the only way to honor either of these individuals is by naming the facility. There's other cases throughout the district where, where you know, we have plaques, we have, you know, a, a wall of fame, we have um, different options. So I wanted to make sure that the board had in front of them, you know, if you, if you want to go down the path of naming the facility, we're following the policy, this is how we'll proceed. Uh, if you chose that, you know, maybe this is a better way to honor these two individuals individually in two uh, honoring plaques. Uh, I just wanted that option to be there, but no, I did not circle back with either uh, making their request. Uh, and depending on how the board makes their decision late, if, if need be, I, I can do that. So uh, if the board would like to think about the possibility of naming the facility and one or two plaques would a ballpark estimate cost be you know four thousand if both names are used and three thousand if one name is used so rough estimate on the on either plaque would be a thousand dollars per plaque uh you know quite frankly the, the company we had reached out to they have most plaques come in under a thousand the breakdown of projected what, it, what the uh, cost per word of uh, some of the things we've experienced in the past is roughly $750. We want to make sure we account for potential buffer on, on the, the wording and installation. Uh, I would say roughly if you wanted to go down the path of naming the facility and in addition installing both plaques, you're looking at, I would imagine, no more than $4,000 when you, you add the two together. Thank you. Just back to my statement. I, I would think I would want to know, I mean, that, that would maybe influence how I vote if I, if the person who didn't want the dual um, acknowledgement, I would want to know how they felt about the plaque because that way we could do something that honors um, everyone's desires, um, you know, to have them recognized in the way that they see fit. So I would probably want to know that. Um, that's probably a quick answer to get, but um, that's just my thoughts. Just a point of clarification for myself, Mr. Rogers, would it be correct for parliamentary parlance sake, the decision that the board is about to make would be specifically for the renaming of the facility, and then we could make considerations of whatever the plaques to President Brown's point, wanting to make sure that we honor the, the requests appropriately. Um, would that, is that a correct assumption? Yes, tonight the real decision has to be whether or not there are two board members supporting the renaming of the facility based on following board policy. Um, and again, that would, wouldn't go before the board for a vote until March. So that's a, a decent uh, amount of time to be able to get the answers to the questions that uh, President Brown are, are seeking. Um, 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, I just want to. I like the plaques. I like the pla the plaques. Um, I think. Uh, I think right. I, if I'm hearing the administration correctly, if I'm hearing uh, Mr. Rogers correctly, uh, our choices are. Well, we should decide. Do we want to rename the building, or provide the plaques? I know there there may be an urge to do the renaming, and the plaques. Um, I, 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 I guess I think that's a lot. Not that it's not deserved, but it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, beyond what's being requested. Um, but I do appreciate uh, the plaques being presented as 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 an option in in the lobby, over at, at the auditorium. There are plaques for, um, uh, I believe they're still there. Uh, World War One, World War Two, and Vietnam veterans. Uh, all, all the folks that, you know, um, lost their lives in those conflicts, and uh, and as a as a as a student at the high school, I, I took time to look at those. And these plaques, I I think people would take time to look at them and read about their careers and read about their contributions, which is um that's a lot to get from something. And I I think it's a good it's a good acknowledgement. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rogers, can you just give like a, a ballpark of, I know you, you said that we, you pay per character on the plaque um, when that, you, t you said $1,000. Is that like the length of a tweet? Is it a sentence? Is it a um, paragraph? Like ha ballpark for that $1,000, what are we talking about? A medium-sized paragraph, enough to really <clears throat> follow through on what, and truly honor these two individuals if you were to, to Write it up, and I I would not be taking on that task. That's not my area of expertise. Is uh, <laughs> writing something like that. The only thing that sticks in my head is that um, if we if we're considering both, but we're about to make a decision, right? If we vote on it, but the person who didn't want it to be both names, they may be willing to accept that if there's also going to be a plaque, like if there's going to be a place where that person is distinguished and acknowledged alone, they may then say. I mean, they may say, okay, well, I'm okay with it being the Benglian, Beglian Dietzler Performing Arts Center with the understanding that there's also going to be a plaque that is exclusive to Harry and talks about his contribution and accomplishments. Again, I would want to know that <laughs> before I make this decision. He said there's time to I just want to make sure, I, I, in my mind, Craig, what we're trying to accomplish tonight, tonight um, five, point five on page slide two, and, and Kyle, we're, tonight, I think you're asking the, the board to s simply say, you agree to change the name, and then you can come back and work through what that name change will be, potentially, and how to honor it, or is it simply, I want to make sure we're, we're, we're focusing on what it is. If it's tonight that they have to agree to how they're changing the name versus just that they're going to change the name, it's two different, two different points that we have to get through. Your policy doesn't really envision having competing options here. Uh, so your, it, look, the policy is supposed to give your, it is supposed to be your way of establishing your procedures. And you have not established a procedure for this. So you're going to have to decide what it is that you want to do moving forward with this. Um, you certainly can decide at this point that all that you're doing is generically making a decision that you're open to changing the name and will have further discussions at a later point, that's fine. Uh, like I said, your policy doesn't really speak to it one way or the other. And there's no problem with doing that because in the end, there's no law that says that you must do this or that or any other way of doing it. Yeah, so my question, well, um, Kyle, I guess, spoke to this when he said we could... Um, generically decide to move forward a name change but not specify the name. Tonight, I, I was going to say, could we just table this item and consider it at next month's committee meeting? You can choose to do what you'd like. This is, you know, you are the governing body of this, of this district. Um, my point was only that you can decide now what you're intending to be doing in the process that you're going to be following because you have a situation that was not envisioned when this policy was put together. 
I just wanted to say, since I'm one of the requesters, I'm not going to weigh in now or when we vote on it. Um, but I do think it's really important to honor both of these individuals appropriately. So just to be totally clear, we're not voting tonight. So what we're looking for tonight is whether there are two people who say, yes, let's, let's consider a name change at a future meeting. And the earliest that that meeting could be anyway is March because it, it's too late for the February meeting anyway, correct? Um, I guess my point was only that if you, if you only had one name under consideration and you were tonight deciding whether to move forward with a name change, then by default, you're also saying that is the name. That's just not where you are now. To Dr. Haig's point, if, they, if it's generically approved, you, can't, you, you still have time until March because you have to advertise for 14 days. So there's plenty of time before the March date to generically approve, work out the comments that are being here, and provide an update prior to the March board meeting. Yeah, that, uh, that was, I had, I started raising my hand. That was what I was going to say, that the, the actual name that's going to be voted on has to appear in, in the newspaper of record prior to the vote. So it, it does have, you know, we have to set the name at some point. It sounds like we're going to figure out the specifics later, but we're just going to agree to do a name change. Two people have to agree to that. Is that correct, Kyle or Craig? That that certainly can be your procedure at this point. There's your your policy. I mean, according to what I'm reading, that's what it says. Your so. policy is ambiguous about whether or not the name change refers to a particular name or whether it refers to the process of a name change. I'm, what I'm trying to say is that I don't have an opinion on which was intended here. I think that this, because of what was uh, expected, that there'd only be one name coming forward, the language here would then be read, read to mean the name that was suggested is then being approved to move forward. So Director Desnoyers may be correct that the, the requirement is to put into the newspaper the particular name that you're planning to, to move forward with, which would mean that you wouldn't advertise it now. You would advertise it after you've had other discussions so that you can then come back in, in time for the next for the March meeting and advertise for two weeks. Okay. So if we were to get the answer to Mr. Brown's question prior to the February meeting, could we have the discussion under old business or no? You could have the conversation at the February board meeting under old business and that would allow for the 14 days before the March meeting. Yes. Okay. Good conversations. I think we are. Are we ready to move on to the next agenda item? All right, agenda item number three, please. At this, so agenda item number three is policy, which will require board action. At this point, I'll hand it over to Director Desnoyers. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Uh, there are three policies under consideration this evening, as Mr. Rogers previously said. They are policy 610, purchases subject to bid quotation, policy 611, purchases budgeted, and policy 626, federal fiscal compliance. Um, as a reminder, uh, these policies underwent a first reading at the January board meeting, and if moved forward tonight, still need a um, uh, need to be voted on uh, and adopted at a subsequent board meeting. Um, so the changes to the policies um, are simply changing the minimum dollar amounts um, where the requirements for these various policies kick in, um, and those changes are driven by statute. Uh, so they're not in the statute, but the statute says uh, the, the dollar amounts have to be updated each year to, to keep in line with uh, inflation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director DeSnoyers. Anyone have any questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, I think we can move on to public comment. Am I correct? All right, Mrs. Buford, do we have anyone online who had submitted comments for the 
uh, at any of the agenda items this evening. Director Warsavage, there are no comments for this evening. Thank you so much. Is there anyone here presently physically who would like to make a public comment? Seeing none, I believe we can move forward with the review of the agenda before taking any necessary board action. The first agenda item, again, was the report on the annual water testing, which was informational. Mr. Marvin Lee provided an update on our water testing as it regarded, in regards to the copper and lead testing throughout the district. Uh, item number two was a request to name a school district facility as an update to the board, uh, which will require board action in the sense we will at this time need to discuss whether or not there are two board members that would like to move forward with the idea of renaming the facility, um, which would put us into this next phase and allow for time uh, for future discussion. All right, do we have two interested board members who would like to move this forward? President Brown and Director Desnoyers. Okay, the final item was policy, uh, which will require board action for policy 610, 611, and 626. The board would like to move those forward to a second reading? Yes. Yes, yes. That concludes our agenda for the evening. Thank you very much. I believe a motion for adjournment is in order. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.